either you have any or question, I'll kindly drop it there, which is very good. So uh, welcome on board, Mr. Greg, once more. So I would like you to quite kindly share more light on what uh, cost management is and how important it is in this our challenging economic period. Thank you. Thank you very much, Femi, Emmanuel. Um, and I also want to thank the ECOBA team for inviting me for this webinar today. Uh, if you let me share my screen, I will... Can you please let me share my screen? Thank you, sir. Okay, um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And again, I welcome you to, to the giving me 30 minutes to try to do justice to this topic. Uh, it's, it's a short time, but I will try to uh, rush through the material in, in, in that period. And uh, at the end of it, if um, uh, anyone wants to get in contact with me for uh, the specific areas that I may be, uh, that I will be speaking about today, please uh, get in contact with Femi Emmanuel. So, Today's topic is business performance, the role of cost management in challenging economic times. Now, it goes without saying that today in the world, we are going through challenging economic times, not just in Nigeria, but in other parts of the world. Now, with the challenging times that we are going through, cost management is indeed very important. So we are gonna be looking at, first of all, how to establish the sort of challenging times that we are in. We'll look at the, some of the challenges that we are currently faced with today. We're also going to look at what cost management is and why it's important and the cost management tools that we can put in place to help our businesses. We're also then going to look at business performance and how we must ensure that we manage business performance effectively going forward. So with that, Now, most of you on this call today, are either business people, you business, uh, part of a business, whatever, where, wherever it is that you tend to find yourself, you are in business to make money and to earn a substantial income to look after yourselves and your family members. Now, that means, in other words, that we live in a capitalist world. Looking after yourself, businesses will thrive and you would earn a good income and you would prosper. Smith argues that by giving everyone the freedom to produce and exchange goods as they please, opening up the market to competition, people's natural self-interest would promote greater prosperity. What gets you out of bed every day? It's your self-interest to actually ensure that you earn a substantial income for your business to look after your family. The invisible hand is based on the forces of demand and supply. The forces of demand and supply 
establishes your pricing. So in other words, the price that you are able to sell a product for is as good as the price that someone out there is willing to pay for that product. In other words, competition in the marketplace is very important. Assuming there's free trade, free entry, competition, of course, is very important. And to be competitive, there is the need to establish the right strategy, manage costs to ensure optimal business performance. So let us look at the key characteristics of perfect competition. What are the key characteristics of competition, business competition? We have a large number of we have free entry and exit of Yeah, free, there's free entry into those areas, into those sectors. That is not to say that there are no barriers to entry. There are barriers to entry, but there is free entry. Each firm should sell a homogeneous product. So in other words, you pick your niche and you focus on that niche and you focus on that product. And then buyers and sellers have complete knowledge of the market. You have no business in a particular sector, in a particular area of business, if you do not have knowledge of that market. And there's no price control. What I mean by no price control here is not necessarily the fact that you cannot set your price. You can set your price. But according to the invisible hand of Adam Smith, the forces of demand and supply set that price because you must, even after you have set your price, you must benchmark your price to what is obtainable in the market based on what someone or another business is willing to pay for your product. So basically, this the 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 the, the business competition, the business competition is key in establishing this invisible hand. So imagine a woman who um, imports, is a trader and imports pr products, say from China. She has to deal with competitors and she also has to deal with uh, uh, customers that are looking for a bargain. Now, the key point there is looking for a bargain. And in looking for a bargain, you must consider your price. And in establishing that price, like I said, your cost has to be effectively managed. So why is cost management important? We've established the fact that the, 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 world, the business world that we live in is very complex and there is the need to control overall uh, uh, business cost, particularly project costs as well. Cost management helps us in establishing our pre periodic planning, thereby able to establish our future expenses and costs. So take, for example, you, um, um, uh, you, 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 you have uh, your, 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 your budget, and with your budget, you're able to establish the expenses of the cost that keys into that budget, and you're able to spread that cost over a period of time. That period that you spread that cost helps you to plan. So strategy is key. Strategy helps us to ensure that we are doing the right things and doing them right. And how do we do that? We do that by ensuring that for every input into the business, and inputs differ, they may be human inputs, they may be materials, they may be whatever they may be. For every input into the business, we must ensure that the input generates the necessary desired output. 
which helps us to enhance our performance. It also helps us to establish long-term trends of business. Basically, it's important to look at where your business is within a year, within three years, and even within five years. So when you establish your budget, you should not just allocate those budgets to setting, uh, to, 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 you should not just allocate them to today, but you should actually establish those budgets and roll them out for, roll them out to other periods because they will help you trend as you move forward. Cost management is also important because it helps us in establishing And not just numbers. Those there are yes. may trigger reaction in another business area. And sometimes it is difficult to establish what this is until you are able to figure out compare mission set. Not the cost of that television set alone. You may have other costs that may be overlooked. For example, logistics, installation, those are is process optimization, business optimization. And when we talk about process optimization, the process that you, um, you, you undergo in your businesses are a set of value chain. At each point in this value chain, there is cost, attributed cost. And the key points to note is that that cost must be managed. So, at the end of the day, with cost management, we should be able to plan better and make better decisions as a business. Now, let's talk about challenging economic times. How do we establish what sort of challenging economic times we are faced with? A very easy um, tool that we can use, business tool that we can use to establish this is our SWOT analysis, where we look at our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Our strengths and weaknesses are internal to our business. Our opportunities and threats are external to our business. And with our strengths, we must aim to do to, to increase those strengths. That's what we are best at. We must do to do even more. With our weaknesses, we must aim to reduce those weaknesses or build capacity. But with the opportunities, the opportunities actually affect others, other businesses as much as it affects your business. And same with the threats. We must always aim to mitigate against those threats and we must always aim to harness those opportunities. So taking your opportunities and threats and establishing what they are can help us to establish the sort of challenging times that we are in. Now, looking at the example I have on the right, Sedibank Breweries, a business that's based out in Botswana. I'm going to take um, a look at the opportunities and the threats and speak to them very briefly. So let's look at a key opportunity here, packaging. 
new generation of custom of consumers appreciate high-end bottling and labeling. Of course, we talk about the Gen Zs and the young people of this world, they appreciate packaging. So if you as a business, you are stuck in the past and you are not actually going ahead to do things like, you know, looking at what would make your, your product more appealing to, um, to your consumers, then perhaps you are not leveraging on that opportunity to the best of your ability. So in essence, you as a business can say, okay, what can I do to enhance my packaging? Thereby helping my product be more marketable in the public. Let's take a look at, for example, government programs. Now, there are promotions of and initiatives to support exports. That is an opportunity. Now, if you don't sit to establish the, your, 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 your opportunities, if you are not able to study your environment and you know, establish the, 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 the benefits or drawbacks in your particular environment, you will struggle to actually um, um, harness such opportunities. Let's look at the threats. Vertical integration. Major breweries have control of supply and distribution channels to corner the market. Why is this important as a threat? That means that your competitors are now in charge of input materials. That means that your competitors are also in charge of your distribution channels. So if you as a competitor have to leverage on other fellow competitors for your input, what if they try to drive you out of business and what they do in trying to drive you out of business is increase the cost of your supplier. Automatically, that you have a threat on your hands, which you have to manage. Or what if the, 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 the distribution channels all of a sudden come up with certain bottlenecks for your business and thereby you're not able to get your goods to, you, to the public? That is a threat. So these are ways in which we must establish our um, uh, uh, the challenging economic times that we, we, we live in. And a key tool that can be used in managing this is establishing a risk register. It is important to know what your risks are as a business and thereby you will be able to manage those risks. Now let's look at some of the challenges that you and I may be facing as business people. Now, the sorts of challenges that we face today, and I'm sure some of these will resonate with, with some of you. I'll take a few of them. Now, we have natural disasters. We've had COVID in the last, we can't even say that COVID is gone, but at least we had a period of two years whereby, you know, people, businesses, you know, crumbled. Businesses were, were uh, businesses, you know, um, um, were, 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 were sent out of business completely. We had a period whereby supply chain was disrupted because of the inability of businesses to actually do what it is they actually set out to do. That, of course, would be a challenge for our businesses, assuming we have input materials that are you know, stuck in, in, in these supply chain disruptions or as a result of these supply chain disruptions. Similarly, we have the war in Ukraine. Now, this war in Ukraine has led to a, an influx of negative things around the world. So for example, it's led to supply chain disruptions like I've just also explained. It's also led to an increase in energy costs. How does that affect your business? That affects your business because say at the start of the year, you budget to spend X amount of money on energy. But with the cost of diesel today, and most businesses have to operate using generators because of the uh, inconsistent level of power supply that we have. So with the cost of diesel today, you find that you end up, your, your, whatever budget it's, you, you may have put together at the start may not still be obtainable at the end of the day. So that is to say that even your budgets, they have to be live budgets. They have to be, you know, we spoke about 
putting them into periods. They have to be periodic so that at you, you have checkpoints, at you have regular checkpoints where you sit down and you take a look back. Okay, how have we performed in this period? Do we need to alter our budgets moving forward? ETC, ETC. We have security challenges, for example, in Nigeria. That means that, for example, if you produce goods that you need to take all over the 36 states in the country, how do you effectively do that with the level of insecurity in the country? Now, what that means is that you need to put certain things in place. You may need to organize some form of security to follow your, 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 um, your trailer or your, your whatever it is that you're moving, whatever product it is that you're moving. You would need to pay for goods in transit insurance. Now, all of these things, they of course would, they're, they're costs to your business. And these costs have to be established because with these costs, you, uh, the, you, you use this cost in establishing your, your, your prices. So these are some things that have to be managed. So let me just quickly go through some of the other points. We have a downturn in the economy. We have in increased interest rates as a result of inflation. It, it, go it goes without saying that around the world today, there's an increase in, in, in inflation. And that has led to increased interest rates, which of course would be a knock-on effect on your business. We have issues of corruption and bribery, bribery and corruption. Now, take for example the oil and gas industry. The cost of producing an average barrel of crude in Nigeria is substantially more than producing an average barrel of crude in any part of the world. And we ask ourselves why that is the case. And that really is the case because of the level of corruption that occurs in that space. So. Take, for example, I mean, I, you know, of, of, of late in the last couple of weeks, we've been hearing about pipeline vandalization. So as a business, if you budget to receive X amount of um, uh, crude into your terminal, but because of, you know, um, infractions into your pipeline, you don't receive that, then how do you plan? So there are, so there, there, there are many issues around bribery and corruption that we can speak about. But let us move on and just speak very quickly about um, Forex. A lot of you may do business internationally and with the, the business that you do, you need Forex to be able to purchase your input product. Now, with the price of Forex today, you can imagine how difficult it is to manage your, your business, to plan and to, to, to have the appropriate strategy. It is indeed a challenge. And today we have high migration. So getting good staff is a problem. So with people leaving the country, you need to get, you need to try to replace them. In trying to replace them, you may need to try to, you may need to have to pay them a little bit more. Now, these are challenges that businesses face. And I'm sure some of your businesses face some issues like this. And lastly, I'll talk about political instability. We are in the period of elections. And running up to the elections, we know that there would be a little bit of political instability. You know, if, you're, if, you're, if you run a business in the market, there may be days that they may come and say, oh, uh, a political party is campaigning in this area. So therefore this market will not open today. There are certain things that will happen. Or let us even take, for example, what happens in the East today. On Mondays in the East, businesses do not open at all. So when you are planning or when you're, when you're, when you're strategizing as a business, you strategize without Mondays as a day of operations. Of course, that will impact your bottom line. So all these severe disruptions can challenge costs, pricing, profitability, and business growth, which calls for very, very careful cost management. So we ask ourselves what cost management is. Before we get to what cost management is, it is important that we know what cost is. So what is cost? Cost is defined as the monetary valuation of a material resource or time. Basically, it means what someone is willing to pay for your, your product. Now, in other words, it also means the price that you set for your product or your service, which someone pays for. So that is cost. Now, cost management is concerned with the process of planning. We spoke about planning. 
planning is very important because without if you if you if you fail to plan you are planning to fail you must plan you must have a strategy okay planning controlling that cost and improving cost efficiency by reducing cost or at least restricting the growth of cost one thing is also very important here is the increase in revenue we must ensure that we are not just looking at cost and cost alone but doing whatever it is that we can do to increase revenue and i will be speaking a little bit later about sweating your assets when we get back when we are a little um, uh, a little uh, below when i when i uh, touch on another slide now it is inclusive of activities such as planning estimating financing and funding I'm going to be speaking specifically about resource planning, cost estimating, cost budgeting, and cost control as key effective steps to project management. Now, before we get to those uh, points, I want to very quickly touch base on what total cost is. And we ask ourselves what total cost is. It basically is the combination of expenses that a company spends to operate the business and provide products or services. What makes up this total cost? We have our fixed costs and we have our variable costs. Your fixed costs are costs that do not change with your level of operation. They are fixed and they don't change. So take, for example, your rent. Irrespective of the level of production, your rent is sacrosanct. It is what it is. So therefore, what is important with fixed costs? It's, it's, it's important to spread those fixed costs as widely as possible by increasing our level of production, thereby ensuring that the fixed cost dedicated to each unit is reduced. What are variable costs? Variable costs are costs that vary with the level of your production. So take, for example, um, um, your, your input raw materials. Now, with your input more raw materials, as you increase your level of production, the, the, the variable cost attributed to producing a unit would, of course, increase. Now, we need to also bring the concept of break-even point or break-even analysis. It's very, very important because break-even point is the point in which you have produced the um, number of units required to cover your total costs. And producing the number of units required to producing your total costs at the break-even point, what that means is you are at the point that you are not necessarily making a profit, you are not necessarily making a loss, but you are breaking even. And after that point, you can start to make a profit. So let us look at this chart on the left. We have, this is the price, and this is the level of our production. This is our fixed cost. You remember I said it doesn't change with production. And this is our variable cost. Now, the sum of our variable cost and our fixed cost gives us our total cost, which we can see here, okay? Now, this is our total revenue. As you can see, the total revenue comes from here and builds all the way up. Now, as a new business, we imagine that the level of your investment in business we will, will, would be quite substantial. And with that level of investment, it will take it a while before you break even. And this is the break even point where, like I said, you are not making a profit and you are not making a loss. You are just breaking even. But at the end of the day, where is it that we want to be operating? We want to be operating within this space, within this space. Now, for us to operate effectively within this space, we must ensure that we do whatever we can to increase production. We must ensure that we do whatever we can to ensure that our fixed costs are spread thin, okay, such that the, 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 the average um, cost of producing one unit, okay, is not as much as what it, it is, it's not ridiculously much, okay, and thereby the, 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 the average cost of 
a, 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 a product, okay, is reduced. So that's what we need to always make sure at that point, okay? Now, we are now going to talk about key issues in practical cost management. You know, this was what I said we'll be talking about a bit later. Now, we'll be talking about resource planning, cost estimating, budgeting, cost control, and benchmark cost. Now, what is resource planning? Resource planning helps us to establish what our materials or our input into our production. If it's a service business, for example, and you don't have inputs like raw materials, as a service business, your input will be your people. So resource planning helps us to establish what resources are required to operate that business or what resources are required to produce that item. When we establish what inputs are required, we then need to establish the quantity that is required of those inputs. In doing this, we can do this using a work breakdown structure. What is a work breakdown structure? A work breakdown structure basically takes uh, an expenditure or takes a project and breaks it down into smaller components thereby making it easier for you to understand the different cost components because those, those cost components build up into the eventual cost that you are going to charge. So ideally, you should be looking at your work breakdown structure to establish the different elements that would go into that cost. When that is done, then we look at cost estimating. What is cost estimation? Cost estimation is important to establish the right price and obtain the right option, choosing the right option that will benefit the business. So you would have options. You would have various options, which is why um, um, procure, contract and procurement principles, okay, are very important. You should at least have a choice of maybe three different you know, um, um, options for prices so that you are choosing the best price for your business. When you establish your cost est estimation, of course, without compromising on quality, what is key after that is your budget. You take the resources that, your input resources that you have estimated, and then you allocate them over a period. What is the importance of allocating them over a period? You can measure your budget and compare that your budget against your actual performance to establish a variance. And like I said before now, establishing that variance is very, very important because it helps us to, um, to, to, to know why those, variance, those variances may have come up. I say that an action in business trade as a reaction. So you need to know what action has come up to trigger that reaction of that variance. And then, of course, by the time you investigate it, you will put the necessary measures in place. It's absolutely very important because this would help you in also controlling your cost. And when we talk about um, cost control, cost control is also very important because there are measures that would generally help you in ensuring that your costs are managed and uh, 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 compared, uh, com managed when compared to your baseline, your baseline is the cost that you set at the at the uh, right at the beginning. By the way, when we talk of resource planning, that is why it is important for every business to have a business plan together with financial projections. And it's always good to refer back to those plans and check to see how you're doing. And if it is a project it is important for you to have a project execution plan together with very strict risk management in managing how you, 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 you move forward with your planning. Now, talking about cost control, what are the sort of cost control measures that we can consider? Separation of duties, making sure that not, it's, not, it's not the same person that starts a process that finishes that process. Having the right corporate governance in place, making sure that there are strict approval processes. And at least people always check whatever it is 
that you as a person you have done, whatever it is your capacity is in that business. And establishment and elimination of waste. That's very important because at the end of the day, you know, I spoke about process review and each process being part of a, the, the, the value chain and a cost attributed to that, to that point in the value chain. It is very important to look at your process to establish what may be redundant and eliminate it, thereby reducing your cost. It's also very important to ensure that you carry out effective contract and procurement. Like I said, not too long ago, that is very important because it will help you to ensure that you are buying right. And I'm going to shortly be talking about buying right when I speak about value for money uh, in, in, in a little while from now. And cost tracking is also very important in cost control. So at each point, there must be a checkpoint to actually look at what it, whatever it is that you may have done. Benchmarking cost is also very key because you need to see how your price compares with others in the market. There's no point in establishing a product and you put it in the marketplace and people cannot, you know, um, people are not able to afford that product because it is too high. So you must ensure that you compare your price to what is obtainable in the market. And the same also goes with your cost, your expenditure. Before you incur any expenditure, compare that expenditure to what is obtainable in the market. Because of course, as you know, your expenditure is what also adds up to your pricing. So we're now gonna talk about business performance. What is business performance? Business performance is a reflection of the commercial efficiency of effectiveness. What is effectiveness? Effectiveness is achieving your desired output. Now, how do you establish a desired output? It's by having a plan. So when you have a plan, you try to ensure that you are effective in the delivery of that plan. Now, business performance is how commercially efficient you are in the achievement of that plan. So it can also be defined as the company's ability to use the best of the resources it has in managing its business activities. There are certain things I want us to bear in mind as we look at this. Profitability. Profitability is, simply put, revenue minus cost. As the business, we aim to be profitable. So if we're not looking at our costs and managing our costs, then of course, our level of revenue will not be as much or our profitability will not be as much because the cost will erode the revenue. So it's very important to manage our costs in ensuring that we are profitable. Another concept to also consider is the concept of liquidity. For businesses like yours, I would imagine that you must aim to always be liquid to be able to do the things that you are able to do. And what is liquidity? It's simply put, it is cash inflow minus outflow. Liquidity, like, 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 like it's properly, popularly said, cash is king. So it is important for cash to, for you to always be, be liquid to carry out the things that you need to do. Now, the level of cost underlines both profitability and liquidity, it making cost management in a challenging economy very, very vital. Now, what are the um, tools that we can use in measuring business performance? Now, we talk about establishing our key performance indicators. It's important to establish what those key performance indicators are because it shows the progress of the business. Now, when we establish what those key performance indicators are, we need to then establish the metrics that would use in measuring those key performance indicators. And when we establish the metrics, we then need to go ahead to actually measure those, um, those, those, those key performance indicators using the metrics. So let me explain a little bit more on this using the next slide. Now, we talk about strategy. And when we talk about strategy, we talk about setting goals. Now, what are our goals? Now, 
your goals will differ from my goals. So as a business, you need to establish what your goals are. Now, what are some of the goals that you may, um, you may aim to achieve? They may be lead generation. They may be increase in sales. Or they may be um, increase in profit margin or increase in production efficiency. Now, when those goals are established, you need to establish your KPIs, like I initially said. And in the establishment of the KPIs, say, for example, your, your aim is increasing revenue. What you then look at for as a key performance indicator, if you are looking at the goal of increasing revenue, is how much revenue you have been able to generate per employee. So, for example, you then have to establish, okay, as a business, how many employees do I have? What are they expected to do? And what revenue have they been able to generate from what they are expected to do? When you establish this, you then establish the metrics. Now, the metrics I have already mentioned, they are the employees and the revenue. But then you have to compare them using the ratio to establish your key performance indicator. And you must always make sure that you track and measure your KPIs all the time because they are crucial to your business success. Now, this we can even say is the crux of why we're here. Everything we can say is, is the foundation. Now, cost control in challenging times. What are the tips that we can, uh, that I can give you today that we can use to control costs in business? We need to establish our um, uh, environment. We need to understand our environment. Some people go into business without actually understanding their particular environment. That is dangerous. And in order for you to establish your environment or to understand your environment even more, you need to, I would advise that you carry out a very high level personal analysis where you look at your political environment, the economic aspects of the environment, the social aspects of your environment, the technological aspects of your environment, the legal aspect of your environment, and the environment itself. By the time you do this, I can tell you that you would have a good understanding of what challenges that you may be faced with. So take, for example, uh, using uh, the previous example I used for, 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 for that of an event company. Now that we are going into political season, now to what extent are um, 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 people going to have a lot of events around February and March when we are having elections, when people are perhaps scared? We, so as, 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 a, as an event manager, you need to understand your environment with regards to that. There are security threats all over. You need to understand your environment and the cost that would emanate from managing the understanding of your environment. And like I also said, a risk register here will be very, very important for you in establishing your risk and managing them. You need to understand your sector. Some people just don't understand their sector. They go into business without having full knowledge of your sector. You need to understand your sector to be able to thrive in that sector. You need to separate your business and personal finances. Everything we've spoken about today is with regards to business. If you bring in personal finances into your business, at the end of the day, what is, what is going to come out of that would be you not being able to plan effectively. And if you are not able to plan effectively, everything with regards to cost management will fall flat on its feet. So, it is important to separate your personal finances from business finances. If you have personal finances and you're running a small business, pay yourself a salary and from your salary, manage your personal finances so that at least you can manage your business costs accordingly. You need to lay down business targets or standards of performance. What are we saying here? As a business, you must focus on a niche area. So, you may say that you are focusing on 
high net worth people. And if you're focusing on high net worth people, you know the standards of performance that is expected. You must not compromise on your standards of performance, but you must ensure that you focus on the right category of, 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 of your niche. You must measure your actual performance against budgets. I've spoken about this and the importance of this and the importance of variance analysis. It's very important because it also helps us in planning. We must also pursue value for money. Now, when people talk about value for money, what do they mean when they speak about value for money? They, they are talking about the three E's, economy, efficiency, and effectiveness. What is economy? Economy is the thrift, thrift of good housekeeping. Basically, doing the right things and doing them right. Buying right. So buying, purchasing a product that you need at the right price, at the right quantity, not compromising on quality. That is effectiveness is basically achieving what you set out to do. There's no point in setting out to do something and not even achieving it at all. So you must be effective. So with every when you're setting your price, always think of these three E's. When you're going to purchase anything, think of three E's. Are you purchasing right? Is it at the right price? Are you compromising on quality? How much are you able to sweat your assets to get even more from your assets? And are you achieving what you have set us to achieve? It is important to also look at your, your process. Like I said, your process is a comp combination of um, your value chain. And when you look at your value chain, it is important to eliminate redundant and unnecessary processes that may lead to unnecessary expenditure, which in other words, would build to your cost. So that is very important for you to manage. Apply the 80-20 efficiency rule by ensuring that you get the maximum output from the least inputs by sweating your assets. We should also separate our carry out separation of duties because at the end of the day, if you alone are looking at one thing, you may not be able to get that thing absolutely correct. And you have, you may be at liberty to do your cost unnecessarily. But if you know that someone else is going to check whatever it is that you're going to do, that would also help the business. We've also spoken about implementing budgets and investigating variances. We've also spoken about stretching your fixed assets. You remember when we spoke about fixed costs, you know, your fixed costs don't change. You must ensure that you try. is a competitive price. There's also implementing inventory management. Now, why is this important? Some of you business owners um, that have a lot of stock, you don't even know what stock you're carrying. Now, if you don't know what stock you're carrying, at the end of the day, you would have loss of inventory. And if you have loss of inventory, you are not getting revenue for those um, um, inventory. And if you're not getting revenue for those inventory, then in other words, you're not covering your cost. And if you're not covering your cost, of course, that is a challenge. So we must also put inventory management processes in place. We must have strict approval processes and corporate governance. Very, very important because corporate governance would help us to ensure that we're doing things right, to ensure that there are various levels of checks to ensure that we're doing the right things. We should reduce uh, borrowing costs by embarking on revenue drive. It's not just focusing on costs alone. We must also focus on, increase, on, on increasing our revenue. That's absolutely very important. We must dedicate time to proper accounting. Some of us feel that we don't need an accountant. Well, that may be true, but you need accounting and you need accounting services. They are very important because you may not even fully understand how to build up your pricing. You need an accountant to look at your books to help you to help you to establish your direct costs, your indirect costs, okay, your fixed costs and your variable costs, and 
to establish what your potential margin should be when you compare that price of your product to the price, other prices of other people's products obtainable in the market. You must also track and monitor your cost real time. And ideally you should do this using, um, you can do this manually or you can do this using a software, but ideally you should use a software. We also spoke in this presentation today about key performance indicators. You must set your strategy. You must establish what those key performance indicators are. You must also establish what metrics you are using for measurement. And you must also make sure that you actually measure. And when you measure, it's not what you just measure and you just keep in, in, in a file and you lock up in your system. You must sit with your team to actually look back at, at what may have happened. Have we achieved our target? The uh, using the example I, I gave on, on revenue, for example, have we increased revenue? What is the revenue per um, employee? You can establish all of these factors. Using technology can also help us in eliminating certain things. So say, for example, you technology can I mean, like we popularly say, time is money. We all have, um, 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 so take for example, service businesses. Service businesses, their main input are their people. So time is important. So if time is not managed properly, then you would find that the cost that those service businesses or the prices that those service businesses give their customers um, in the public would be high because they are giving, they are passing on to their customers inefficiency and ineffectiveness. So time management is very important in your business. Now, you may want to focus on your business and leave your core areas because those things perhaps consider outsourcing of services to subject matter experts so that because they know they can help you by focusing on that area while you focus on your core business, your cost, and thereby you can supervise the, the, the other I can't um overemphasize this this is absolutely very important because with a with an effect tends to have very effective contract and procurement policies and implementation because if you buy right then at least you are halfway there to ensuring that your pricing is right so these are some of the um cost control uh, uh mechanisms that we can use in managing our costs and in ensuring that our pricing is uh is is is, is good and is competitive now in conclusion um, like i said at the start people engage in businesses for various reasons. But then the key thing is to earn a substantial income. The business world is complex. We must ensure that we are managing our costs such that we, whatever pricing that we are able to put out is competitive. And I do appeal, it is very important that you constantly benchmark your pricing to what is obtainable in the market so that your product is indeed competitive. Now, this brings me to an end of my presentation. I thank you for listening. Um, and uh, I wouldn't spend too much time on this. Uh, so I am from, uh, I'm a director with SSAC Advisory and Professionals. Uh, we are a consultancy outfit and we have a whole bunch of services which you can please 
check us out on our website, uh, which is www.ssacltd.com. Thank you very much for listening. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Greg, for doing justice to that uh, topic. I personally have learned a lot about what post management is actually is. And I know the audience as well have actually learned a very good thing that can actually help them in their businesses. Like uh, how to, I mean, to come to from breakdown of the course, talking about the profitability, the pricing methodology, the value for money, the business performance measures, using key indicators, whether you are properly managing your cost and you stress what you actually call process optimization, which I actually like a lot. And um, at the end, you are even talking about uh, the usage of tech I mean, technology. And if you look at it very well, please, um, I mentioned earlier on that BMAC is a uh, quote, please uh, just drop your second, just drop your questions, uh, please. And it will be handled shortly. But uh, before we go to that very session, I just want to drop something. Uh, if you look at uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the conclusion part of, conclusive part of that presentation, we talk about usage of technology. And um, if you look at what uh, Mr. Greg said in his presentation, he talked about process optimization, which is more or less, you are optim I mean, I mean, automating your processes. So BMAC has a lot of software, like for software is BMAC accounting, the inventory management system you can use to track your businesses, but eventually your business is multi-location, we do very, very useful for you and they allow you to be able to reduce your cost to be to the nearest minimum. And don't forget, it says something, that profitability is revenue minus cost. So what you work on, you reduce, you have control over your variable cost. So you can reduce to the barest amount to be able to maximize your profitability. But so by using the software, it will enable you to be able to have a higher profitability in your business. So I will encourage you to come in and look as well, call on us or BMAC anytime, which we can be able to uh, talk more about that. And you can as well go last to our, I mean, our, our site so you can read more about our products. So after you, I mean, over to you, Dami, please, to, for the question and answer section. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, um, Femi. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Greg, for your wonderful presentation. Um, I'm sure that everybody here, or let me speak for myself, I'm, um, I really, really enjoyed your session and I found it like very informative. Thank you so much. Sir. So I'm uh, moving to the questions and answers. We have just one question for now, but I'm also going to open the floor for like um, five minutes for anyone who wants to ask questions. So um, let me just go to the first question from Mr. Godwin. Can we say that working remotely is a cost minimization strategy, considering the disadvantages in allowing staff to work remotely from the comfort of their home or outside their office? Okay, thank you very much for that, uh, Dami, and thank you very much for that question, um, uh, Godwin. Yes, indeed, um, it is a it, working from home is a cost um, optimization strategy. Well, I, I want to shed a bit more light on that. You know, with, with the advent of COVID, a lot of things changed. You know, in terms of the way we work and how we do what we do, and um, with when when COVID came around, uh, a lot of people found themselves working from home. Now, uh, with working from home, certain things um, where where businesses were able to manage certain things. So, take for example, a business that rents um, a, a a building in Marina and pays a lot of money for rent, but what? that business actually does a lot of it's it, it, perhaps it's staff a lot of its staff are not client facing so for 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 staff that are not client facing they can operate from home and in operating from home the business is able to save on on paying rent so you remember i said to you that you know rent is a constant is a fixed cost okay so if you're able to reduce your rent, say, for example, maybe by reducing the amount of space 
that you occupy in your office because a lot of your staff don't necessarily have to come into the office to work. So if you reduce the space, you reduce how much you pay, you reduce your rent, and in the reduction of your rent, then the, as, as that rent is applicable to every unit of production, you would find that the average cost of that production will reduce. But you have also mentioned a very good point in that when people work from home, there is also the need to manage them. Unfortunately, you can put controls in place to manage people, but you do not have control over the people that are being managed. So you can put controls, but those controls, the, the staff have to use those controls. Now, if, and, and unfortunately in a country like Nigeria, to um, power your generator to actually do your work, then at the end of the day, you cannot say that you have been effective. So whilst, yes, it is a cost optimization strategy, it's a cost optimization strategy that has to be managed. So in conclusion, I would say that it depends on the type of business that you have, what you do that would determine the level of work from home that you will potentially you know, put in place as a cost optimization strategy. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Greg. I hope that answered your question, Mr. Um, Mr. Ogene Godwin. So um, I also have a question from Mr. or Ms. Mrs. Medandia. I'm sorry, I don't know which. So um, please, could you discuss practically how one can reduce borrowing costs by actual performance so, so can, we, can we take the questions one after the other? Repeat the no, 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 let's, let's just take them one after the other so that I, I, I don't lose my train of thought. Let's take the first question, please. Okay, no problem. Okay. Please, could you discuss how, sorry. Just a second. Please, could you discuss practically how one can reduce borrowing costs by embarking on revenue? Okay, costs? that's fine. Thank you. Now, um, of course, when you start a business, you are either, you know, um, um, using your 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 retained earnings, or you know, your, your your you've gotten money from your family, your friends, or you've saved money, or whatever the case is to start the business. But then, as your business expands, you need to um, um, find, you know, additional uh, revenue streams to manage that business. Now, in finding additional revenue streams to manage that business, your cost is, is, is whilst managing costs is very important, we must also ensure that the revenue is, is managed, okay? Is, is enhanced, okay? Now, in enhancing our revenue, we must ensure, sorry, please, can, can we take this part B of that question again so that I can, I can get that point right? Sorry, you, you, there was a part B that um, I, I need to speak to. You see, increasing what's in managing. Please, how do you measure actual performance against budget? That's the second part. No, 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 no. I've not finished the first, first answer, please. Okay, could you discuss practically how one can reduce borrowing costs by embarking okay, on yes, revenue yes, costs. Yes, yes, borrowing costs. So now the, the key thing is strategy. You must, you must strategize, okay? And in strategizing, you must ensure that um, you, you, you don't do everything at the same time. Because at the same, the, 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 what you, you must know is that the cost of borrowing, particularly in a country like Nigeria, is very high. Now, you must try to manage that cost. I mean, going to get a loan, for example, from a bank at... 25%, 26% interest is really, really, really high and it can cripple any business, okay? So if you plan and you strategize properly, you are able to utilize your, and, and you run your business properly, you manage your costs, okay? You will be able to utilize that 
um, 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 utilize that strategy in ensuring that you use your retained earnings, okay, to run your business as opposed to going to have to get um, um, loans from banks. Um, I, I personally, yes, you, you need loans to, to survive as a businessman. There's no doubt about that. I personally try to avoid loans as, as an individual and as a business, you know, because of the high cost of those loans, because those loans have to be serviced and someone has to pay for those loans. Now, um, we have to try to manage to not um, 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 pass those loans, the cost of those loans onto our customers. So I would always suggest utilizing, um, strategizing and utilizing a lot of your retained earnings, okay, to run your, your, your business. Okay, sir. So um, the second one, the second question is, is how do you measure actual performance against budget? Okay, so now um, when you establish your budget, you know there are there are when you establish your budget, you can you, you can establish budget for your costs, you can establish budgets for your revenue, and those budgets are um, applicable to periods. So you can take those budgets. You remember we spoke about um, cost uh, cost uh, re re cost planning, uh, cost estimating. Okay, and cost planning and cost estimating. So when we go about uh, our cost planning and, and, and cost estimating, we're able to establish the input that goes into our budget. When we establish the input that goes into our budget, we then need to take that budget and allocate those um, cost elements and those revenue elements to different periods within that budget. So for example, you are able to say, okay, um, you know, I expect, you know, in terms of revenue, I expect, 10 million naira revenue, okay? Now, if you're just starting operations at the start of the year, you know that at the start of the year, perhaps, you know, um, things may be a little bit slow. People have just come back from Christmas. People don't really have a lot of money and, you know, people are, 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 are paying school fees, etc., etc. Now, when you consider all of that, you know that at least the, the, the demand for your product may be a little bit smaller or lower than normal. Now, if the demand for your product is a little bit lower than normal, then what happens? You, you, are, you, you, you have to plan your budget in such a way that in the first quarter of the year, what you allocate to revenue in the first quarter is minimal, okay? But as you build up beyond that first quarter to the second quarter and to the third quarter, you know that, you know, um, 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 there may be an increase in the demand for your product, okay? And thereby you are able to increase your revenue, okay? And that can generally go on till the end of the year. Now, you can review your, your budget periodically. You can review your budget monthly to ensure that you are not um, um, completely out of, out of line with your budget. You compare what your actual, uh, your initial budget was to what your performance actually is and what is performance what so if for example you budget that your revenue is going to be a hundred thousand naira in january okay your actual performance is how much revenue you actually got in in january okay now if you are able to establish how much revenue you are actually able to get in in january and that revenue is actually say maybe eighty thousand as opposed to hundred thousand so that is that there, there, there was definitely a reduction in revenue now, you need to sit and think to yourself, okay, what happened? Okay, I planned that I was going to get 100,000. Something must have triggered me not achieving this 100,000. And when you sit to actually have a look at this variance analysis, it helps you in making better plans for future periods, okay? So for your next quarters, for quarter two, for quarter three, for quarter four, it helps you in establishing, you know, in making your business decisions for, 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 for future periods. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, um, yes. Okay. I'm with you, please. Okay. So um, right now we are done with the questions. I don't know if anyone still has questions to ask, but I would say that you can drop it in the chat box and we can still revisit it afterwards. 
Right now, I'm going to hand over to my colleague who's going to take over the poll. Um, Steven, you have the slot. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you, Dami. Um, thank you, everyone, for, for coming in. I'm just going to push um, this poll to us. Let us um, answer the question. So it's a, <clears throat> it's a way of measuring that uh, to see people are following and if, uh, you know, the was, was good. So I've pushed the poll. Let us answer within 30 seconds or a minute and uh, we are done. Okay, um, I'm going to be ending this poll in 10 seconds. If you have not um, answered it, please do so. Okay, yeah, so the recorded version of this presentation and the presentation itself will be sent to um, everyone that registered for this uh, webinar. So, all right, um, I'm going to be ending the poll now and sharing the results. Thank you for um, answering this poll. I'm going to leave the floor to the moderator, uh, Femi. Over to you, sir. All right, thank you, Steve. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time, and thank you, Mr. Greg, uh, for the for the for the presentation. We learned a lot. And thank you, we've come to the end of the, of the webinar. Thank you, we, we, I was to say gratitude to our group managing director, that's uh, Mr. Sam Afemeke for this opportunity given to us to be able to have this uh, webinar series. And at the same time, we thank our, our CEO, that's uh, Mr. Fem Afemeke Jr. as well. And we thank uh, Mr. I'm sorry, Madam Rashida Alaka, that's our general manager for ECOBA here. For their support given to us. My colleague over there, that's called Mr. Steven Kolade, and the Damien and everyone that partook this uh, to the, for the success of this uh, webinar. Thank you very well. Thank you very much. We really, I really appreciate. We meet in November for the next webinar series. Enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, before we round up, Femi, um, before we round up, um, in, in your, she's in your DM, so we need to uh, give a, a short uh, presentation on uh, BMAC apps and services. I'm sure it's, um, <laughs> so I'm, doing, I'm going to do that presentation and uh, we're not going to take um, so much of our time. So let me share my screen. Okay, so um, basically, um, BMAC is, um, we, you know, we are um, right, is to make sure that businesses stay profitable and sustainable, right? And we've developed uh, quite a number of solutions to um, help us um, push this. So BMAC, like, basically, is all you need to supercharge your business, um, you know, in terms of accounting, tax, uh, advisory, and uh, solution. I hope uh, you can hear me. So uh, moving forward, right, it said accounting for your business uh, made easy for you with or without an accountant. So uh, basically, uh, the BMAC accounting solution, um, you know, BMAC, it's, we have like different solutions. The first is the BMAC accounting, uh, which is a cloud-based accounting software uh, that's easy to use. You can re record your day-to-day -day activities, uh, get a lot of you know, reports, uh, your income statements, you know, profit and loss, and uh, whatnot. 
Uh, we also have the BMAC IMS web, which is for uh, you know businesses that you know do day-to-day -day transactions, buying and selling, uh, like superstores and so on. So the BMAC IMS is also a cloud-based uh, solution, gives you um, an overview of your business at a glance. You know which product is you know doing well, which product is not doing well. You know your fast moving products. You know you have all the um, reports and um, you have um, enough information. Uh, decisions. Uh, we also have the desktop, which is uh, basically the uh, IMS, but it doesn't need internet, right? Uh, it just is a, is a desktop application. You can use it uh, without internet, and you know it's just um, an inventory management solution as well. Uh, we also have uh, the invoicing app, uh, which is a free tool for uh, freelancers, you know, to you know send invoice, create invoices, thirty minutes, sorry, thirty seconds. Um, and we, we offer you know, different services. Our assembly line offers different services, uh, you know, management account services, um, you know, tax, you can amplify your tax, and also business advisory, which is, uh, you know, for you to, we can sit and analyze your business and know, know what steps you are supposed to take. So PMAC uh, solutions uh, tailored to help you upscale your business. You can't make proper decisions and, um, you can't make the best decisions when you don't have enough information. So BMAC is that link, right? That gives you an overview uh, that helps you to track and manage your business. And there's a um, feature, there's a particular uh, aspect to it, which is the fact that you can access it anywhere in the world. Uh, so that's uh, about BMAC uh, solution. So um, we are going to drop the website um, in the chat box. Um, I'm going to drop the website in the chat box so you can check out the website, you know, uh, we have a 30 days uh, free trial version for people that are just signing up. So you can come in, you know, sign up, uh, look at the, uh, enjoy the, the application for a month and, you know, let's get your feedback on it. Uh, so we are dropping the uh, website in the chat box uh, right now. So Femi, uh, you can go on with the ranging up. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Steve. Um, and